English football fans are notorious for following their team home and away, whether it is outside the ground, giving it large, or inside the ground, giving it large. Or even just getting sparked out by Specky Potter. <laughs> The English disease, more commonly known as football hooliganism, has been around pretty much since football began. Now, football hooligans are usually fairly easy to identify, usually wearing that typical casual gear. You know, the jeans, the CB company, the Stone Island. Sorry, he's there. It's just a bit hot in here. Okay. Now you may be confused as to why football hooligans do go to games in this attire, so to speak. And I mean, originally, back in when football firms were just absolutely huge, they wore it to infiltrate the opposing team's firms without actually wearing club colours. Now I am aware that majority of the people watching this video will know what a football firm is, but for those that don't, there's about 92 professional teams in the football leagues across England, with each one having at least one firm usually split between the older lot and the younger lot who are all trying to make a name for themselves to prove themselves worthy to the older generation you know the ones that have been kicking about since the 1900 well now i say 1900s like some victorian thing like mr william shakespeare was at millwall away glassing people but i mean more so the 1970s 80s 90s when it was massive football firms and i mean it's when the football just kind of just took over England. So these younger lads are trying to make a name for themselves. I guess kind of battling it out in organised fights against other 16 year olds, 17, 18, 18, you know, all that younger kind of side of it. Same with the older generation, we'll be meeting with the other older firms in organised fights. And again, this uh, to other people that aren't, I guess, as involved in football as, some, as, as, as a football hooligan, you really just will not understand why on a Saturday would you want to spend your time battering bloody Phil from Chippy. I mean, I'm not going to say I completely understand it, but it's the passion for the club. It's that passion to show that your club is the best, your club is the strongest, your club is the hardest. Even if you're getting battered 6-0 on pitch by Manchester City, the fans have a chance to show who their club is, represent their club. Even if it isn't actually physically representing them, Word spreads, word will spread, or oh, you heard West Ham, Batter, Burton, Albion. I, I don't know why I've used them. You know, word spread, it's building a reputation for your club, building a reputation for yourself in the football world. So now we're going to look at why people actually refer to it as the English disease. One of the cases we are going to be looking at is a Nottingham Forest fan who sadly passed away after an encounter with the Burnley Youth Suicide Squad back in 2002. Now I do really believe that this case right here it was a massive staple for police to kind of have that advantage over football fans at the time and kind of push it even more to stamp out football hooliganism, especially for about the last 10 20 years when there's been a real real extra push to try and prevent things like this happening again now before we discuss this case i think it's really really important to emphasize that the man that died in this was just 17 years old and the man that was guilty of manslaughter in this case was just 19. So two lives were lost on this day with one of them obviously being ruined by themselves, 19 year old Burnley fan. It was as a result of his own actions, whereas innocent 17 year old Nathan Shaw, a Nottingham Forest fan, lost his life as a result of being attacked with a pint of beer. Now this case right here is one of many where we see football fans, often the innocent party, end up involved in a serious, serious accident. And this sort of thing is becoming more and more common over the past few years. I mean, back in the old days, it was more firm, meeting firm, trying to show who really is the toughest, you know, no cheaping out, jumping someone. No, no, not like Jack Grealish getting done in. More so like when you've got 20 Millwall fans chasing one Sunderland fan. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. That kind of vibe. It's not just Sunderland, it's not just Millwall. It literally happens everywhere nowadays. I think it is just a show of the times. You know, back in the days, it was people trying to show who really was the toughest. Now it's just people trying to pretend that they are the toughest. Now we're going to go and move on to one of the biggest rivalries in English football, especially when it comes to this sort of topic. Now I know I've name dropped Millwall many times, but it isn't just you guys, but you lot are just 
fucking mental. So what we've seen throughout this video so far is many fights taken before and after games, but in 2009, in a League Cup fixture, at Upton Park, West Ham would face off against their rivals, Millwall. And when I say rivals, it is a bitter, bitter rivalry. It's so bad that not just fighting and rioting and brick throwing and bottle throwing, throwing anything just happened outside the game. It also caused the fans to get on the pitch themselves, not to whack one top bins in the 90th minute, but to go and absolutely smash Dave from the other team. Do you know how many stewards are at a football game? Not just one, not just two, but literally tens and hundreds of fans getting onto the pitch and just going 10 rounds in the middle of the, in the, in the, the halfway line, mate. Like, that is crazy. Like, it's, it's just mental. But we'll leave Millwall alone for now, although I'm sure the Millwall fans are absolutely loving this, you know, typical Mill fans. Millwall! We'll now look at possibly why people outside of the football community and outside of people just getting their heads smashed in. <laughs> Why do they see it as a disease, so to speak? Now, I think a lot of it is the disruption it can cause. I mean, just look at Sunland when they went to Trafalgar Square and literally took over. Like, took over Trafalgar Square to the next level. There was no way anyone was getting through there. Flares off, everything, drinking from the early hours of 9 o'clock in the morning all the way through to 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the following day to then just go for one game in Wembley. Now, I know a lot of football fans will see it as amazing. It's great support. It's class to see. But if you look from the outer perspective, you know, possibly people that are trying to commute to work, things like that, they're probably not going to be too happy that Dave... Johnny, all them lot are absolutely pissed on the curb outside their house. Yeah, we are, we love me. I'm just pure smash before gaming it. But what can really be done in order to kind of make a more stable form of travel for games, you know, prevent so much damage happening, not just to the local area, but to the actual football fans themselves, whether or not they want it or not, it shouldn't really be their choice. Now, the government has invested millions, billions of pounds into trying to prevent it, and I genuinely don't think there's much more they can do. Other than prevent fans from being able to exit the town, make sure they have to come on coaches, is probably the only way it's going to happen, which I think you can get away with not doing it every single game, but in the big games, I think it has to definitely happen, you know, the derbies, things like that. But I also think a lot of football fans get a bad name, you know, people that, if they see someone in Stone Island, you know, CP Company, hey, someone might just think it's quite fashionable, yeah, leave them alone. <clears throat> oh, sorry. But guys, in the comments, I want to know what the worst experience you've had with football fans, whether it is with your own fans, on an away day, fans coming to your ground, or just on street with your nan and one of them's kicked off an Aldi. But if you have enjoyed today's video, make sure you do subscribe and check out this video right here. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.